Oh, Merry Chrysler, boys. Merry I can't Chrysler. believe we decided to hit the podcast room on Christmas Day. I know. Yeah. I wouldn't. Sorry, family. Yeah. <laughs> My wife is thrilled. They're just in the other room. Come on. Yeah. Come on out, guys. Yeah, they're watching Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> Have you guys ever worked on Christmas Day? No. Ethan, I know you'd like to say you did. I was being like, <laughs> oh, I worked so hard. But no, I, I think, honestly, it, it always saddens me to see places open. But then I'm like, some people don't care about Christmas and they'd rather just make some money. That's cool, too. But yeah, I feel like as far as our region of Georgia, most places just close. It just shuts down. It just shuts down. And I like that. I like that. It's like Sundays in the 60s. Everything oh. shut down. Like, what can you do on Christmas Day? Go to a movie? Movies. Waffle, Waffle House? House. Um, there was one other thing. Chinese restaurant. I was about to say some, like, foreign restaurants, maybe. Mm-hmm. Foreign. <laughs> International. Sorry. Uh, My bad. Dude, no, you're cool. That's probably... Hey, if, if you worked on Christmas Day, we want to hear about it. Let us know what you did. Maybe You know who worked on Christmas Day? Who? Saint Nick, talking Santa Claus. Hey. He, no, he worked on the Christmas night. Eve. Well, do you think like the wee hours? Of, no, of the morning. Have you ever seen Polar Express? I'm not sure. No, like he has to debrief when he gets back to the no. NP. <laughs> no, <laughs> when, when, when do you when do you think he rides off on his sleigh? It's at midnight. No, that's what happens in the movie. That's not canon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that was Polar Express. And Dude, Polar Express you know who else works TV. on uh, on uh, Christmas who? this year? Belschnickel? Freaking churches. Churches were having oh, services. Oh, yeah, true that. True on that. Christmas Day? Yeah, hot button issue yeah. oh. that we're just not really in, but like people are like, do we have a church service? Mm. If I On Christmas it, Day? Because we, it was a Sunday? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just like, no. Yeah. What? <laughs> My parents went to church. What's yeah. wrong with them? Gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. You know, the church that I was in, in in high school and out of high school, it was like the church we all were in, for that matter. If there was anything on Sunday, church was canceled. Really? Like Super Bowl, no church. No. It was also, we also met at night. I think that was a part uh, of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was like, yep, Super Bowl. Nah. Super Bowl Sunday. Christmas. Oh, you're missing nah. it. Oh, you got it. Ross is uh, continuing his hot streak of preparing us a cup of Joe via his favorite brewing device, <laughs> Chemex. <laughs> it's the only one big enough. We'll for... talk about the coffee when we uh, when we start sipping on it. But how many grams are you going in on that? Yeah, what's your spec? I kind of forgot, but here it goes. Awesome. Let's see. 46. Oh, so okay, what's the math, gang? Just for anyone out there that doesn't know about brew ratios, a brew ratio speaks to how strong your coffee is. And uh, 1 to 15, 1 to 16, and 1 to 17 are like the most popular brew ratios for specialty coffee. And 1 to 15 obviously being strongest, 1 to 17 being weakest. I like to brew darker roasted coffees at 1 to 15. Do you guys ever brew one to fifteen? Uh, almost never. If I was going to brew drip, I probably would. Almost exclusively because I make coffee for the frisbee guys, and they like it strong. Well, and I'm using Miracle from August right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so okay, I, that's a good point. I, I'm too. more like the one to fifteen, one to fourteen, like one to just. Yeah. Dump some coffee in there. Yeah, and that's another thing is uh, coffee that is older needs to be brewed stronger because the reason you would brew coffee at a 1 to 17 is if it's a more delicate coffee with more complexity, you want to bring out more of those flavors, open it up, make it more tea-like. Um, but I honest, I just never mess with any of that, really. Like, uh, rare occasion, I'll do 1 to 15 if it's darker coffee, but I just always do 1 to 16. So... I have 46 grams of ground coffee. I am going to m use my phone calculator on my Apple and <laughs> multiply it by 16. I just like to think that there's a someone has definitely made like a coffee calculator. 
Yeah, for sure. And I'm oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you can just use so, a calculator. 736 grams of water. Here's you got it in there? Here it goes. Maybe. Oh, I, I don't hit on the coffee calculator. I'm sure that it has more features. Here goes the bloom. Hey, I got to get sponsored by a coffee calculator before I start loving on it. All right. You guys ever used the like built in brew guide on the Pearl? Never. I just, I don't, I also don't know anyone that has. If you've used it, Smash like, comment below. Let send us know how it is. Send us a video of you using it. Yeah, send us a video of you. We used a timer. Yeah. Huh? It counts seconds and minutes. Wow. Not hours, though, which is... In- <laughs> yeah. Yep. What's did up a little that? Did a little bloom here. I like, I like to do... Uh, I, when trying to figure out how much you should pour for your bloom, I like to do double the dose. So around, in this case, around... Yeah, totally. 92. Uh, 92 that was a grams. hard one. Yeah. So are we going to just keep doing this and start switching up our brew methods to the point where we just have an espresso machine in here with us? <laughs> yes. Look, Breville. That would be pretty easy. Breville or La Marzocco, if you're out there want to give us a little, you know, whatever the Breville's called in a Linea Mini. Breville Touch? Is that what it's called? The One Touch. I don't... Th- I think that's the brewer. Oh... The, what? T- the um what did you say oracle was it, was remember it we agreed that we wouldn't correct riley on this episode yeah oh, i thought that was ever yeah i'm the producer okay <laughs> yeah the producer has just notified us we need someone on that side with a talk back just helping us out yeah yeah totally. if you want to be the producer we need a get, jamie yeah get in touch who's jamie isn't that joe rogan's producer's name yeah yeah oh so uh so uh right right so it's not christmas by the way it's not it's not it's It's december 27th the day after boxing day it's my dad's birthday eve okay you know boys it was really (laughs) fun to uh do that last episode with you guys a little year in review you You had fun i had fun i love looking back on uh on the year and reflecting especially with my two and only friends my best friends you nostalgic you sob that? i think it really does help i thought it was really cool and it it, it has inspired me for this year and we'll get into this later of, <laughs> oh, oh. of uh <laughs> doing you know writing down your goals for the year at the top of the year i thought it was really cool that we looked back on the goals you wrote at the top of last year and we hit some of them, didn't we? That's right, Russ. I mean, nearly all of them. That was really fun. I agree that that was fun. I had a good time myself. That's good. I mean, it's your program, so. Yeah, I'm the producer. Uh, what's your guys' favorite uh, Christmas gift or Boxing Day gift that you received? Ooh, I think Ross is wearing his right now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Cut to Ross's camera. <laughs> and now. I'm wearing a thermal. Yeah! It's a, a fruit of the loom, I think. I wish I had a clap track. Yeah. No, I mean, I wouldn't say that's my favorite Christmas gift, but it's it's one I'm currently enjoying. I have always loved thermals. I've never had one. Aw. Aw. I've just never had one. It's, and I'm sorry. Almost like a waffle knit yeah. kind of thing. Now I own like three. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> did, what, did you get like a uh, white, Multi- gray, black? It's just white and black. Nice. I'm yeah. so jealous. I honestly, I had to, I had to steal them. Yeah, yeah. man. Riley, You're do you have a favorite gift of the of the holiday season? <sighs> oh my gosh, You're wearing something new. Where Looks do I like get to start? Well, Ross said the same thing. This was actually uh, a Christmas gift to myself of sorts. Hey, you can still be your favorite. It just, was more of just celebrating how good the Falcons, how are well the Falcons, how how good things are going in the yeah. organization. Oh. You know, we got a lot of cap space. Our our draft that stock is just yeah. All right, guys, listen. Have you heard? Have you heard this? I haven't heard anything. Deshaun Watson. No, <laughs> thank God, and way better. Uh, wait. Currently already playing. Wait, wait, wait no. Um, Russell uh, Wilson. Lamar Jackson. Yes, Falcons. I heard that. Really? He because he yeah. hasn't signed uh, out of his rookie deal yet, right? Is that up this year? No, he's not signed out of it. 
the expectation right now is that they won't reach a deal. They will franchise tag him. He will play hardball, and and they will trade him for some stuff for Desmond Ritter. And he'll he'll probably be a part of the package, honestly. And like AJ Terrell, like Desmond Ritter and two first round picks and a second round pick, probably. If I'm guessing for Lamar, I don't know. listen, I don't know. dude, you have to you have to just take a step back and understand. You can't just guess on MVP caliber player. And so to have a for sure MVP caliber player to get him, sign him to five with an option. And there you go. And that's have, Super Bowl right there. I mean, honestly, like that and then having a, which it'll depend on if it's pre or post draft for the trade. But if it was post draft and we were able to use our like number four pick on something else. Get like another Kyle Pitts. Yeah, just tight keep end. them coming, you know. Uh, Get another big body receiver. Yeah, who like has really good hands. Yeah, yeah really good ball security. <sighs> Drake, you're killing me, Drake. the The first round pick of the Falcons has lost us many games this season. If in case you're not following, yeah. I'd say three, right? I would as well. Yeah, Khalil Mack stripped him, and then uh, the game before this one. And then what was the other one? This, this Pat, game. This game. The this last game. two games. He oh, fumbled it. just fumbled. Well, that didn't lose us the game. It, it lost us the It was a one-possession game. Yeah, but the other two were like very clearly like we were going to score Yeah, to win the game. This was more like really early in the game we fumbled. Yeah, but it was a one-possession game, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ethan, what was your favorite Christmas present? Listen, I didn't even get to say mine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I didn't really either, but go ahead. Wow, Ross, what the heck, It seems as if Ethan is projecting our favorite gifts upon us. He is. He is. He's (laughs) trying to feed us the script. Let me just give you guys some space. (laughs) Well, my favorite gift was my wife got me a Kindle. Nice. I never thought I would want a Kindle. Did you bring it? I did not, no. It's more of like, it's going to be more of a bedside accessory. Wow. Uh, I like how it doesn't have a traditional like backlight so it's not bad for your eyes when you're in bed Mm -hmm. because the light on it shines from the top you can turn it off and then it just looks like paper obviously that's kind of like the kindle bit but there's a light if you want to turn it on this that shines from the top onto the screen Uh, like back onto itself technology do you you already have a book for it uh no I think I'm going to I'm going to do some fiction. If you have any fiction recommendations, let me know. I've always said I really enjoyed the uh CS Lewis Space Trilogy. You have. I should I should read that for you. Uh I might also do Lord of the Rings. Never done it, so I, I finished think. that this year. I know. It was awesome. I cried at the end. Oh. You said it was way better. Oh, yeah. Baby. What? The book is better, would you say? Uh uh no no they're just different oh the okay. movies are pretty like uh like this sounds dumb and everybody knows it but there's like not a lot of war chatter or like it, it doesn't spend a ton of time in the battles in the books mm-hmm. and it would make sense that if you're a movie you would spend a lot more time during like action but it doesn't yeah. like depict action. It's not like an action book. It's like a fantasy book. Yeah. So it's way more about like world building and dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Your turn, Ethan. Well, let's send it back to Ross. Ross, go ahead, man. What was your favorite gift? I know you're wearing the thermal. My favorite gift, I, I really should have brought them today, uh, was a, were a? Mm. How do you say a pair? Whiz. Whiz. It was a it was <laughs> well my favorite gift, it was a uh, pair of studio monitor studio studio monitor headphones. Is that what you call them? You could call them that, yeah. Uh reference headphones. So I'm, I'm excited about those. I could have worn them on the program today. Oh, you should start doing that. That'd be cool. Yeah. A little little personal flair. No, it'd be good. Yeah. I'd be dripped out. No doubt. No cap. Are they like hot pink? They're not hot pink. Ah crap. Uh, much to my demise, mm. but uh, no, they sound really, really good. 
Wow. I'm kind of excited about him. Oh my gosh. Wow. Can you tell? How many drivers? 10 million. <laughs> 10 million <laughs> drivers. Yeah. Shout out to all my driver heads out there. You know where you're at. Smash like. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Anybody that's put more than one driver in your ear, smash like. In your ear. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you guys have been waiting for this moment, so let me just cut straight to it. My wife got me a sweater. And I'm, I'm <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Is it cable knit? Yes. Is it a fisherman's sweater? Yes. Wow. I love fishing. You know I've always wanted one of those. You're How so could you? Pro fishing. <sighs> I know. Just took it right out of your grasp. Uh, it's actually, I had a, she bought me a blue one a couple years back. This year she got me a, uh, it's called, the color was called wheat. So like a mm. wheat. Wheat. <laughs> wheat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's awesome. I'm obsessed. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And she also got me some, if you go to Whole Foods and you see all this like condiments and sauces that are like, Twelve to fourteen dollars. That's what I like. So she got me like f- four of those. Yep. So I got like this really fancy Japanese barbecue sauce, really fancy sriracha. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on. So, guys, listeners out there, if you have some extra cash lying around and you want to give Ethan those hot sauces, that could really add to the segment that we started cooking up last week, which was, hey, send sheet cake. <laughs> <laughs> Send some sheet. Yeah, cake where's the sheet cake? To oh yeah, Valor Studios. Ethan will dress up in a tux. This is what you said last week. We're gonna smash your face in it, and let's throw some hot sauce in there too. You know, that sounds miserable. Send us more stuff. Yeah, like that's kind of this this segment. We, this this corner is what did you guys send us? <laughs> We've been saying that a lot. We talked about uh, people sending us coffee that we can review last week. I mean, what's next? Freaking. Money, just straight cash. Golf clubs. We'll review the money. Like, what year was it minted? If you send us money, Ethan will lick it on air. <laughs> I've eaten a dollar before. It, you freak. Yeah. I yeah. totally believe that. Who hey, hasn't? cheers. Cheers. Hey, I... to old Lang Syne. <laughs> <laughs> to old Lang Syne. Should we should we sing a Durs right now? A little old Lang Syne. I'm in. All right. Um, this coffee. How did you come across this coffee? Well, Ross, I was at an endo- endodontic appointment. Is that what you call it? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I, maybe I'm saying that wrong. If I am, then correct me in the comments. But I had a root canal done when I was 11, okay? Let me take you back. I was I was 11. I had a root canal done. It's It's come time for that root canal to be touched up. So I had to drive over to Gainesville. When in Gainesville, what do you do? You go to Meadowlark. Come on. You get some coffee. I went to Meadowlark. I said, I'm going to bring the boys back some coffee. And so that I did. I brought the boys back some coffee. Thank you, man. It's for Process Coffee Yep. in Belfast. Belfast. I'll give you $5 if you can tell me what country Belfast is in. Ireland. Ireland. There you go. All right. I owe you five. Could have done that as well, but it's fine. Well, you didn't. Um but this coffee is from Ethiopia, Bashasha. It's a Bashasha. Oh, wow. of course. Um, flavor notes. You know, we're, we're not really big on flavor notes, are we, mm, boys? Hey, come on. I think they've just gotten unhelpful. Yeah. Well, okay. So this is uh, apricot jam, chalk lime sweets, clean and tea-like. All right, um, that's kind of helpful. Dang it. Yeah. And, Trust the uh, process. It is 2,000 to 2,100 meters above sea level. It's washed. Oh, that's what M-A- M-A-S-L. I, I'm always just like, yeah, altitude. You really have never known? I, I haven't, it's on our box. I haven't given it an ounce of thought. I'm just like, when I see M-A- M-A-S-L, I'm like, altitude. That's an altitude thing. But it means meters above sea level crap i'm saying this on air oh no yeah so yeah the selling point for that coffee is definitely the packaging looks like a uh, vhs ta- tape what's the difference between vhs and VA- vcr though are you serious yeah what are you dude like like you freaking like gen z it's or like something? video home system and video i don't know what they stand for but the vcr is what plays the vhs the VCR plays the VHS. Video cassette recorder, maybe? This coffee... This is cringe. This coffee brewed 
in seven minutes and 50 seconds. Again? And it's so good. I think it's really, really balanced and really flavorful. This is the first time I've had this coffee and I enjoyed it. Thankfully, I have my refractometer in my pocket. Oh, so. great. All right, sorry. I'm just kidding. I, know. I was really expecting you to pull a refractometer out of your pocket. <laughs> what would you have done? Man? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm full I, of surprises. Boys, it's the end of the year, right? Mm. And this sort of gets us uh, into a topic that we have been really, really looking forward to. Is that right? Oh, we've been itching. Our favorite song. What was your favorite <laughs> song of the year? What did this? Did you guys get the Spotify stuff? Yeah. Did your Spotify tell you your favorite song of the year? Yes. Yeah. And did it match your favorite song of the year? No. Um, because yours was like Baby Shark. No. No, my favorite song of the year did not match my my favorite song of the year. If that makes sense. What was your Spotify favorite song of the year? And then was, what is your favorite song of the year? It was like a. It, it was by United Pursuit. Uh, it was like a, a slow acoustic y kind of song. Oh yeah. Um and that's just what I it's like really good background music. It's really good driving music. Um and so turn on your driving music, put on your driving gloves, right. see what happens. It's, yeah. I mean, it's what it's in the Prius, baby. Anything can happen. You gotta have driving gloves in the Prius. Yeah, of course. Just all those quick maneuvers, you know. And now what's your favorite song of the year? Uh it's by a band called Yes. Um, they're a prog rock band from Prague, eighty <laughs> Prague, yeah, from the city of Prague. Uh, it's called. Uh, hey, now I'll give you five dollars if you can name what country Prague is in. Czech Republic. Ah, oh, crap! Now we're even. Uh, it's by yeah. So it's a band called Yes, and it's the title is Leave It. That's my favorite song of the year. Go check it out, gang. Yep, can't play it on your air, or we'll get copy striked. Yes, we will. But you could sing it. No, I'm just kidding. Can you not even sing and they'll pick it up? Because I feel like we would sing a lot at the beginning of the... Nah, if we just sang it, they wouldn't pick it up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, No, I'll pass. <sighs> if you guys want to hear Ross sing on the next podcast, smash like. No, that's for the Patreon yeah. subscribers. <laughs> it's exclusive content. Okay, Riley. What do you remember your Spotify favorite song of the year? I do. Yeah. So this year, my favorite album was an album by a gentleman named Ernest. It is uh, it is contemporary country. Oh. Okay, which I typically do not enjoy very much. However, it's it was extremely well produced. There was no uh, stupid like bad words electric crap like other ones do uh you mean like electronic? like drums yeah 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 program stuff. stuff uh there was no programmed i mean i'm sure obviously there was but you know what i'm saying yeah um and it was yeah it was just produced really really well and it sounds amazing but that was my favorite album and so i just listened to that album top to bottom so many times mm. that my n number one through five spotify songs were the top five tracks from that album Dang. And I think my favorite song of the year was the second song from the album, which we is Tennessee Queen by Ernest. I'm a country boy, okay? Now sing it. A country boy can survive. Uh, yeah, so. If Ain't you, it just like a Tennessee queen? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's me. What about you, man? Uh, to, to preface... My wife and I share a Spotify, so I didn't even look at the I didn't look at the wrapped thing. All right, but um, our mutual good friend Elijah Knapp makes music, and it's amazing. But he also makes really awesome playlists, and one of the piano instrumentals on his uh, playlist was called. Uh, what was it called? I don't remember. Can you gain everyone up? Yeah, can on we on the interface? The song was called Sunset Village by the Vernon Spring. And That's it, excellent, Russ. Oh yeah. Wah, ah, 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 ah. Oh, actually, that was my favorite song. Down and, with the sickness? Yeah. Oh. And I've just because of him, I've gotten really into just listening to piano music. Under what circumstances do you put on that type of music? Uh, 
driving, working, uh, at home, living. So just any time. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a time if we're having people over. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, like I will just listen to it. Like if I'm not doing anything, I will just also just sit there and listen to it. Okay, so, so I'd, I'd say just gotcha. about any time. Maybe if I'm like. No, I listen to it while I'm running, but I don't listen to music too often anymore. Wow. That was moving, guys. Yeah, that Unmoved. was really good. If you're moved, <laughs> All right, let's cut cut the crap, guys. Can we just really start talking about, you know, 2023 is upon us. So get out your plate and get ready for the meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes, Come baby. on. The world is your oyster, so... That's the meat is the oyster of 2023. Yeah. 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 We're talking about setting goals today, boys. Um, it's uh, it's not just as cut and dry as like, what are your goals for the year? It's more, I want to talk more about like, should you do it and why and what makes a good goal? Like, what's a goal worth pursuing? How do we accomplish the goals mm. too, you know? Um and it's it's also different for each person. If if goals, if you naturally want to set goals, then uh, that doesn't even necessarily mean that you naturally are better at reaching the goals. It just maybe means you're a forward thinker. Mm. Um, but we, I'm trying to think about our relationship. When I say our, I mean like within Valor, our relationship with setting goals. I remember like when we were in the cart days, which was four five years ago. Uh, I think I was like, we should set some goals this year, like some metrics. Because I think we were kind of spinning spinning our wheels a little bit in the cart. Like we were, no pun intended, it's a cart has wheels. I don't know. Whatever. That was awesome, Ross. Uh, yeah, it's just good radio. I mean, it's, <laughs> I, this stuff just comes to me. It's amazing. Um, and uh, I, I think there was just a little bit of a lack of attainable vision, measurable actionable steps. We always knew we wanted to have a cafe, uh, but didn't really have a plan in place. I really thrive under goals and mm-hmm. plans on how to get there. Cause I can, that means I can take the next step towards somewhere I want to be. And it gives me a really great sense of accomplishment looking back, which is what I mentioned earlier about you talking about the goals you had for last year and how that's inspiring me to do the same this year. Um, so that's kind of, I don't know. That's my personal general take on goals. What about, yeah. what about you, Riley? Like, how do you think about goals? How do I think about goals? Why do you think about goals? Um, I think about goals. All right, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I, I kind of set, some unrealistic I, I i would say i some people would say don't set unrealistic goals sure and some people would say push yourself mm-hmm. uh so i probably lean towards that pushing myself yeah. like uh you know i when i set the goals last year i probably halfway expected us to open our cafe in 2022 yeah i probably didn't really expect us to hit our follower goal on Instagram. Yeah. But I wanted to kind of structure everything around getting to that point. Yeah. So like this year for the cafe, uh, like, so this year my goal for Alpharetta is it's unrealistic. It probably won't happen. And this is being transparent. I want 44 Milton to make a million dollars. And I just think if we could get to the there, I'd be happy with that place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I would, I would be like this, this place it's doing all it can. Yeah. So the silence after you said that was deafening. Palpable. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys okay? <laughs> I'm palped. Well, that's, that's a great goal. And so when you set that goal, what is that? How does that benefit you? Do you, do you just write it down and you like think about it? year long or you yeah. re- reference I mean, it. You know, I can then structure things around that. It's like, yeah, that means we have to sell more stuff. Mm-hmm. How, what is the stuff we're going to sell? How are we going to do it? How are we going to keep volume up through January and February? 
how are we going to uh, take our, f- make our Thursdays more like our Fridays and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, it helps when I'm just trying to think about like it, you have this goal that's a year in the future and then you have these segments, but before that they're called months and weeks and days. <laughs> wow. And so the idea is like, okay, what do I need to do this month to get one twelfth c- closer to that goal? Mm. Right. And there's a lot of that that's in our control, but there's also a lot of that that's out of our control. Um, I'm just thinking about like oh, the difference between saying we want to make a million dollars in, in that cafe this year versus like, I just want this cafe to be awesome this year. Yeah. Like, they're both kind of the same thing, but one is obviously more quantifiable. One's more qualitative, just like want it to be awesome. Um, yeah. Some of my goals from last year were like personal growth type of goals that didn't have tangible actionability, tangible actionability. And I feel like I just like, didn't look at those at all. Yeah. I would like to say that I'm a better person and did some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I like literally labeled it intangibles. And I was like, surprise people with kindness and gifts. That has nothing tangible to it. So yeah. I didn't do it. So this year, I'm going to be like, give someone something unexpected once a month. Sure. Like that is way more. I can put a reminder in my phone every month that says, like, Find the person and their gift. Yeah. And there there could be a, a rebuttal to that, which is like, oh, well, that's not genuine. Like, that's not... If you're putting a reminder in your phone to be thoughtful, that's not thoughtful. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. I, I was just talking about this with someone where their uh, significant other was, was wishing that they would do more thoughtful things for them. And we were talking about this, like, use your phone to remind you <laughs> yeah. to be... To do a thing. Yep. And then all of a sudden, like if you do that for a year, two years, like it will become more natural mm-hmm. to you. Yeah. That's been my journey for sure. It also doesn't have to come natural for it to be genuine. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Like, you can just want to do it and that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of like my philosophy on all uh scheduling stuff. Like I have another one here that's like spend more intentional time with Michaela. Mm-hmm. Uh again, that one wasn't tangible. Uh, I don't think we did spend more intentional time with each other this year. But you could say, go on, you know, one date every two weeks. Now, like a few weeks ago, I put in my phone, the last Saturday of every single month, I get a reminder that says plan, like plan dates and intentional time for next month. Yeah. You don't have to do that as a parent in a lot of ways. That's just the reality of it. Yeah. Uh, there's Life. a little bit less spontaneity. Uh, yeah. Not saying you can't be spontaneous, but you can plan your times to be spon. Spo- what did I say? Spontaneous. spontaneous. Did I say spontaneous just you then? You said spontaneity earlier. Anyways, Which you can works. plan your your spontaneity. Yeah. And that's fine. I think there's something to that, just like the difference between just letting life happen to you and mm-hmm. you're just a recipient of your whatever circumstances are thrown your way w- versus like having autonomy and drive and focus. And I I, I can't remember what we all said about our word for the year, but it's something that we do in valor. I think this is our third year doing it right. However long Mikey's been here, we've done it. So I think 20, the top of 2020, the top of 2021, the top of 2022, and this is the top of 2023. So this will be the fourth time. Fourth time. Wow. Well, yeah. So at the end of this year, it'll be like four years completed of this. But um, that's, I, that kind of speaks to my word for the year, which is accountability. Um, and kind of behind that, I know we're kind of getting off track from goals, but I think this is all a really big part of it. No, it yeah, it's wrapped. This is, a, I think, the internal driver. Yeah. Before you get to like actually setting goals for yourself, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of, in, I was inspired by something Mikey was talking about her word for the year, and it was focus, right? That's her word. That's right. Um, and just, it's kind of this thing of like, am I just going to coast and let life happen to me? And sure, there needs to be some parts of life where you do that, but, um, or am I going to like take control of my life and 
look at a direction of where I want to be and figure out how I'm going to get there. And I think, I think just in some sense last this last year, I kind of coasted in a little bit more than I would have wanted to. And so, um, I've, I've definitely fought, I think pretty much successfully fought shame around that. Like Mm -hmm. it it was a, a year of a lot of transition for us. We moved, we had a, another kid, um, just had, we had some changes with church stuff and, um, it just kind of like shifting a bunch of stuff around. And in the middle of that shifting, I just lost a lot of structure on my life and like rhythms. And when I don't have those life just happens to me instead of me happening happening to life, life. (laughs) like me, I don't know, just controlling, not that I need to be in control of everything, but you guys know what I'm saying. So behind the word accountability is me. I haven't done it yet, but I, I picture myself sitting down for an hour and just journaling, like, what do I want? Mm -hmm. And then how am I going to get there? Mm -hmm. And then including people like you guys in on that and having that accountability with people around, around me. But not only just that, but like accountability to myself and accountability to God and like, you know, all that that entails um, Mm -hmm. of just like this, where I'm at in my life, this is where I want to be. Here's how I'm going to get there. And I want to be accountable to the people around me instead of just kind of coasting. And I've, I've I've indulged a bit more isolation this year with the move. And I I don't like that. I don't, I don't want to be that way. So that's part of, I want to set goals around that. I don't know exactly what the goals are yet, but yeah. Yeah. I relate, man. Yeah. I was thinking my word of the year was going to be uh, integrity just because I've been spending so much time alone or just with my little guy. And you really don't have as like a, a social creature as I am, you know, you got nobody to perform for, you know, you got no one to show up for. Um, and so I was like, I really want to make sure that I'm sticking to what I want to be doing just because it's like a motivation for myself and from God. Uh, I get it. Yeah. The isolation thing starting to amp up a little bit with, uh, with parenthood only, only weeks into it. But, no doubt. Uh, yeah. There's just a lot more. Yeah. Personal discipline that needs to kick into place. And there's also, you know, you're talking about like letting life happen to you, having structure. And then I think what people face when things are in transition is, like dying on the hill of structure and not being adaptive or flexible, you know? And there's like this weird transition time between all of those, like when you're losing that structure that you've been wanting, you start to like cling on to what you have and yeah. like you won't move on. Um, and I think I like experience, I'm experiencing that transition now that your lifestyle is changing. So and our lives will be changing even more in 2023. Yeah. So it's like, what are the new rhythms? What are the new structures? What are the the new things that we're setting ourselves upon that help us grow? But I've never, talking about goals, I've never been much of a, a goal setter, but I love, 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 like if we have like a collaborative goal, it's something I can always like visualize and get behind, like, even a small thing is having like a, a poundage goal at the roaster. Here. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Meaning like, how many pounds per, yeah, like, per week are we roasting? Right. Yeah, okay. How many pounds did we do this week? All right. What do we want to do about that? Yeah. Um, and I think one thing I want to definitely do is try to figure out kind of what you're saying, but like, how do I integrate um, personnel like goals? Like, cause so much of my job is just being, uh, a leader. So what does it look like to create like development goals? Goals for other people. Goals for other people. Yeah. Goals for like creating touch points with people on the team, making sure that like part of my job is just being available for the team. Um, so that's something I'm excited to step into more this year of like, I want to try to have a lab time and a 
like health check with everyone on the team at these metrics. And I want to like just go be behind the bar X many hours a week to encourage and build up, you know? Yeah. And I think we haven't said it yet, but it's just that classic thing of like structure or schedule is freedom, right? Yeah. Because when you do the thing, you have more time instead of just, I get, I get uh, paralysis, you know, Mm -hmm. when you, when you want to, accomplish something but you don't have the steps to do it you just don't take that first step well yeah it's it's you it's freedom structure is freedom but if you set up the structure if you didn't set up the structure that's not freedom yeah like that's slavery that's not good but it's freedom because like that that's what i'm saying where i'm visualizing myself sitting down for an hour and deciding for myself you know what do i want this year that's freedom, me, me deciding that. And then setting up structure to, you know, put structure, well, put, setting up structure to put up structure. Wow. To, uh, I don't know, put put guardrails around that, have a way to scale that. <clears throat> um, it, it reminds me of just an, another thing this year where this, this year that I learned, which is that we have a false sense of freedom sometimes where we think that freedom is just doing whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And actually, when whenever I do whatever I want, I become the least amount free than I ever am. Like when I do whatever I want, I just watch however much TV, I just drink however much alcohol, or I spend however much time, you know, scrolling on my phone because it's just what I want to do. On Tumblr, on Tumblr, yeah. Then that's that's not freedom. I actually become a slave to whatever the thing I am indulging um, instead of just taking a step back from all of those little dopamine hits mm-hmm. and this little temporary pleasure that I think that's part of like part of the coasting life is like if you're just coasting you're pretty much bound to reach for whatever instantaneous pleasure you'll get in the moment and then all of a sudden you're a slave instead of someone that's free. That's why so many people can't do freelance work yeah. and have their own business because, you know, a, a big driving force for starting your own thing is I want freedom. Autonomy, yeah. Yeah. And then they get that and they don't know how to manage it. Uh, I know I've gone through seasons like that. I think we all have, like, you know, where I I have a little bit more uh, – ability to do whatever I want at work than most people. Obviously, I'm accountable, Ross, <laughs> to you guys. Uh, but you have to structure that or it's going to uh, bite you in your rear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think about how that kind of relates to sowing and reaping. Like setting yourself up for longer term goals is a lot of like dirty work up front you know you don't get to like reap and maybe eat the fruit of your labor for months or years but just to and i'm speaking from experience but to like get on youtube and watch someone cook or watch professional athletes perform at peak quality you're like getting to like just get a little like fake snack of their yeah. success, you know, live vicariously through that. Mm-hmm. So, but then you look at those people and if you ask them, how did you get to where you are? They'd be like, well, it was hard. <laughs> yeah. I gave everything to get where I'm at. Yeah. And even at any point we can choose to coast with our, our own business. Right. Yeah. Cause we, we really busted it for years and we kind of daily, right. Have the opportunity to just like, let a day pass. Yeah, there's a thousand little decisions. Or we can push yeah. the company forward. And that's uh, that's like a leadership model that we really enjoyed picking up from uh, Danny Meyer, the uh, hospitality guy. He talks about uh, leaders having constant gentle pressure. So mm-hmm. this idea of like, if you're trying to push something forward, there's those three phases of, consistency or constant which is just like day in and day out you are steadfast to your work but then when it comes to like pushing you're also gentle so when i think about like 
you know, when you get hyped up, you know, maybe we have a conversation like this, right? We're like, oh, yeah, we're going to crush it this year. It's going to be the best year ever. You could kind of like go out there and go to your team and be like, we got to improve. We got to change everything. We got to work way harder, blah, blah, blah. But that's it's not very gentle. And that's not really like setting a uh, steady pace for the year. But there's a certain gentility to like, being with your team and pushing them forward. And then the pressure is like always, always being hungry for more. Right. You know, we, I think every year we look at how the cafe is doing and we're like, this is awesome. But like, how can we, how can we have it be even more efficient? How can we utilize like the team even more? So everybody can win even more. Um, because we, yeah, we still have that opportunity every time just be like, okay, well, Everything's working. Let's just ride it out. Yeah. And I, I'm sure you guys know businesses and coffee shops and restaurants that like they came out with a good menu. They came out with some good stuff when they opened and they're just they're just riding that wave. And sometimes, you know, that turns into a classic and it's awesome, but more times than not, it's just like goes down. Because you're not Yeah. Well I think about it, it there's there's this old uh adage it's uh if you ain't first you're last <laughs> wow and what that reminds me of is there's this notion of like if we're not moving forward we're moving backwards mm. if we're not constantly growing in some way then we're actually regressing and i i don't think that's ultimately and perfectly true i think there is such a thing as maintaining mm-hmm. like there's there's regression, there's maintaining, and then there's progression. And uh, I think where the balance comes in is that we have to pick, we have to choose our battles of what we want to progress this, yeah. this year. Yeah. And we need to continue to maintain the things that need to be maintained and then obviously minimize regression. Um, but I, I think there's been times with this business where I've, I've had that mentality and I think I've conveyed that to some people that one of our values is hunger for growth Mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of a extremist approach to that is like, if we're not growing, we're regressing. Um, and that, I I think there is some good to that, but it's like, I'm, I'm six foot seven. I'm not growing, but I'm also not regressing. Like I'm not growing taller, (laughs) but I'm just, I'm, I am what I am. I don't know, man. Might be. You might be getting shorter now. You think? Well, I don't know if I'm that well, old yet. You are. You're. Uh, I, I think 26. You stop. You stop uh, making more cells than they die. Oh, so, that's that's fine though. You're dying. <laughs> I'm dying too. It's Can fine. I say something? Yeah. I think the most part of 2021 and maybe the beginning of 2022, I was still pressing into the freedom of the fact that we had grown this company to a point where it, I mean, I take this with a grain of salt. I was going to say make money where no, we're not quite in the, in the, the clear at this point. But I think I was like, okay, we've, we've done a lot. You know, we're sustaining for the time being, uh, I can really dial it down to, to 40 hours a week and never, break from that. And so I did that. And I even added on some extracurricular for myself in the form of like real estate and just like thinking of other things to do, which is great and obviously great for my family and worth it. But I always come back to this thought of, you know, whenever I'm specifically thinking about myself, uh, wanting to, you know, grow my family and, you know, take better care of my family and build a future uh, of where can additional sources of income come from. And then I think about it and I think about it and I think about it. And then I'm like, wait a second, I have my own business. And I then will be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't, maybe just because I worked uh, an extra hour yesterday doesn't mean I should take that hour off today. Because like the way to make my business and, and myself make more money for my business is to keep growing my business. Yeah. And so I think, you know, the second half of this year and then going into this next year, obviously I have a kid now. I have to have some responsibility at home, but I've been a little bit more willing to, if the podcast reels 
that I was supposed to make that day didn't get done, I might pull out my computer at eight o'clock and finish them up because yeah. that's the way to fast track this company growing. Mm-hmm. And I'm really pretty against like hustle culture. I just think it's silly. And uh, a lot of times like mega masculine, gross vibes, not to say there's bad in that. Cause I think there's a lot of good, obviously, but uh, I think that's something I'm carrying into this next year of like, I'm not afraid to put in a little bit of extra sweat here and there uh, yeah. because the only thing that's going to come from it is good unless I take it to like an extreme, but well, it's putting in the extra sweat where it yields the most return. Yeah. Like it's, it's not necessarily like, Oh babe, sorry. I can't talk tonight after the kids went to bed because I have to like dream about wholesale ideas for sales. Like that's probably not something you'd prioritize after putting in an eight hour day. Yeah. You would, you like you said, if you were late on something, then you might crank that out. Um, but yeah, I, I I relate with that too. I that for me that manifests itself a lot in like the realm of wholesale communications because those never sleep. Mm. Like that's that's all the time, and I love being able to get back to people in a timely fashion. Um, but goals goals for this next year. Now we've kind of all. Get, given our personal relationship with goals, um, cafe to a million bucks in a year. I'd I mean, like to see it. again. I think it's a. I think it's a stretch. Yeah. But because uh, I mean, I think, I mean, I I don't know how how much money difference that is, and maybe we won't pry into it too far here. I see for myself. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, that that would be a sizable jump up. Yeah, which I expect January and February to. I mean, I think there's going to be some recession within the economy as a whole. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we will continue to grow. But uh, you know, I think, I think, it, I think we'll have a better January and February than last year, and that'll really help. Oh yeah, well, and, it was bad last year. Yeah, and but I do think that we would have to find a way to produce more beverages to make that happen. Sure. And, but I'm, I don't bigger beverages, just all bigger (laughs) 32 ounce lattes go up on every drink by $3. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to setting goals, this is something I've been thinking about since we've been talking. It reminds me of whenever we do cuppings with first time cuppers, people who've never cupped coffee before, which if you don't know out there, cupping is sort of the standard uh, way to taste coffee in its purest form. And we do it here at least once a week and something we do a lot with wholesale partners too, to figure out which coffee is best for them. Just a little ad there. Uh, and what I, what we tell, uh, first time cuppers is it can be a little intimidating to those people whenever they hear a seasoned taster like Riley say like, Ooh, this tastes like, charred bergamot on a Tuesday. It's like a hyper, wow. hyper, but you know, everybody knows the, uh, the early, cl- early harvest, the classic, you know, early harvest bergamot, <laughs> the pompous sort of, you know, twirling the wine glass kind of uh thing where they're giving out these crazy flavor notes. And we always say like, don't be intimidated by that. Just start whenever you taste a coffee, just start with the most, instinctual basic word you can possibly think of like you you slurp a coffee and then you're like oh this tastes like dark or like oh this tastes like i don't know like lighter or like hmm okay so let's let's say you said light now let's zoom in on that a little bit when you say light is it like literally it's it's watery or is it the flavor is light okay the flavor is light okay so is when you say the flavor is light is that kind of like a tastes like limey acidity or is it more of just like a, a light milk chocolate because those are very different and chances are you're going to be able to narrow that down a little bit and then all of a sudden you've given this sophisticated flavor note on a coffee but you started with I don't know just tastes like light mm-hmm. and it's just we we have all this potential within ourselves to to dial in and become more precise we just sometimes need help and so it reminds me the same way with goals. It's like, I want to be a more present father this year. That would be like saying this coffee tastes light 
And then we're like, okay, well, what do you think a present father does? And then you start to dial in and, and narrow down and be like, oh, then you start to get to the point of like, I want to sit on the ground with my three-year-old. It's her birthday today with my three-year-old and, and play with her for 30 minutes before she goes to bed twice a week. And then you, I'm like, literally put a reminder in my phone. Do that. That's not, that's not unthoughtful. That's not like disingenuous. There's a completely different, just back to this again, because it pisses me off. Whoa. Yeah. Tell us, man. I hate Tell to us. use uh, crass language here. Yeah. So crass, very untold. <laughs> Sorry yeah. to be untold, but uh, there's such a difference between spontaneous and thoughtless. Mm-hmm. You are very thoughtful for putting that reminder in your phone, Ross. Yeah, we love you, Ross. Yeah, just to be just to be clear, I don't struggle with that. I I just think that there's you just peop- like you I, just like talking about it. Well, there's people out there, and they're all wrong. Whoa. Um, but anyways, amen and amen. But yeah, just getting as specific as possible with goals. I don't know if you guys have any random goals that are coming to mind for you this year. I I would really like to get one. It doesn't even have to be like a date date, but like where we like go out to dinner and spend a ton of money or whatever. But where we, my me and my wife have one highly intentional time that's date or date adjacent once a week. Nice. Like the amount of old guys that I ask like, Hey, are you still in love with your wife? And they're like, some of them are like, yeah, like they pretty much all say, yeah, but I can tell <laughs> when they really mean it. Like, and they tell me more about it cause they want to talk about it. And I'm like, so how, how do you, how are you still in love with your wife after 20, 30 years when like the divorce rate is incredibly high and they're like dates, mm. literally dates. And I, and surely that's, you know, I'm not saying that's the We're same. We're not talking the fruit here, guys. I <laughs> just a healthy balanced diet, mostly dates, eight actually. dates a day. So much fiber. This really gets, uh, yeah. gets the poop going anyways. So not, I'm not saying everybody has to go on dates, but I am saying that everybody probably, has, everybody to, go has to go on dates. <laughs> Seriously. It's, it's it definitely for us. And I would, I would say like some of the most like healthy, like on fire for one another in love marriages are like, we just, we take time out of our busy schedules, especially when you bring kids into the mix uh, to prioritize one another. Mm. Um, and there's the whole love, wing, love language thing of like, you know, people prioritize quality time and that's the way they feel loved and that totally factors into it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's, that's a actionable goal for me. That's amazing. I don't know if you guys have any that come to mind. I know it's kind of on the spot. I've got one. Uh, we can maybe once we cycle through our personal goals, we can hit on a, a valor goal, a piece. Because I, sure. I think I've been the only one that said something. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Oh, You're so, so right. Light. Oh god. So I'd say a personal one of mine is to be on my phone less. There you go. Hey. What a what a unique goal. You know. In 2023, I'm going to work out and be on my phone less. <laughs> <laughs> and eat better. <laughs> and eat better. Uh, man, those all need to be goals of mine. Well, honestly. there's a re- there's a reason why people say that. Uh, yeah, so my screen time definitely went up this year mm-hmm. to my demise. And I need to figure out a way to get it down, yeah. get it way down. Uh, I think you know some of it is... I just I justify YouTube as a good excuse mm-hmm. because I can be learning something. Sure. Oh yeah. I and, I can relate with that for sure. And so I look at my screen time for a day and it's like four and a half hours and I'm just like Pfft. like two of that was on YouTube. I could have been watching TV. But I should just be doing neither of those things. Yeah. Uh so I mean that's one of them. But it, again it's like how do I set actionable steps out of that? Because that that's the light roast, you know. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and you got any ideas on actionable steps? I do. I've got some ideas. Great. So social media windows is always a good way to dial back on your phone time. I don't know if you can do this within the app, like only allow it at certain times. I think you kind of can with, uh, focus groups, just in iPhone stuff. There's like this iPhone feature that's called like focus and there's like sleep focus, uh, work focus, personal focus. You can set all of those. Yeah. 
and set them to activate during certain times. So maybe I'll look into that. But I'm pretty sure it only the only thing it really does is remove it from your home screen, which yeah. then all you have to do is like swipe search. down and search for the app. Yeah. Uh, I've tried that. So I just need to be more disciplined. Mm -hmm. And I used to really be like, I'm going to delete Instagram off of my phone. Mm -hmm. And I understand like setting boundaries for yourself. But I also think a part of my goal is just to be disciplined enough to have the app on my phone and not open it at certain times. So I want to do things within my routine that are like, okay, I take my lunch break at work and then I have a 10 minute social media window to do whatever I want. And then like do that twice a day and then at night have a 30 minute YouTube window. And I can tell you, I mean, that sounds big, but like that would drastically cut my time. Uh, So, and then I I need to press into those even more about like, you know, this time I'll do this, this time I'll do that, so on. It's fun how I think a lot of times, too, these goals can be like a chain reaction because in my head, I'm just like, well, I mean, I could do this, 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 this. But it's like when you start to just take life a little more intentionally, it can kind of have this like wholesome effect. Yeah. Which is kind of fun. Uh, Big one for me is probably one of my weakest areas professionally and personally is just this concept of maintenance, just like keeping things well kept. You talked about it last week on the pod, baby. I did? Yeah. Oh, crap. You're talking about your hygiene and your... Uh, <laughs> oh, well, personally, who cares? I don't care about that. Um, We're gonna, you're going to take away more from that to focus in yeah. other areas. <laughs> I'm actually... I was thinking about the last time I shaved my head being the last time I shaved my head for a while, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. <laughs> Would that be fun, guys? That sounds so fun. Um... But I want to really try to take care of my house, especially because my wife and baby will be there a lot more. And that's a part of adulthood I haven't really stepped into. Like changing your air filters? Changing the air filters. Uh, the previous owners left a ton of stuff under the deck that has been underutilized. Um, I, there's, we have a little outhouse shed. Then I think there are rats in it now. Mm. Oops. Um, and that's your shop, dude. That's my shop. <laughs> oh, the shop. Why are you gonna do my about man your shop? cave. That's the hey, shop. Hey, get out of my man cave. Um, yeah, there's definitely some some tangibles there. So uh, that's a small small one, but big implications. No doubt. Even as small as like I didn't. We would just like not take the trash to the curb for like a month at a time. Just be like, ah. mm-hmm. but now I'm like. I got diapers. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Those things got it's gotta get. Yeah. Gotta Come crush get. crush some dish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, let's like let's just let's just I wanna help. Let's do some stuff. Yeah, come on. We let's like, boys let's over. Tile some backsplash. See what happens. Yeah, we'll tile. Uh probably gonna mulch a lot of the yard and like put something over it to kind of block try to cover and kill the, the ivy. We need to like seed your yard or something. Hey, boom. I'm probably not going to do any grass or anything, just like hey, come on. mulch. You need to think bigger. Well, there's just sod. Not, there's <laughs> I don't get a lot of light, you know? Hey, fescue. In the, in right. the forest. Is fescue good for that? I don't know. <laughs> it's hey, a, what's it's the sh- best grass for it's low light? Fescue. Yeah, comment below if you know the best grass for low light. It's fescue. Don't comment. I already know. Jeez. Is it really? Yeah, it's like low light grass. So, so you're saying I was right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ross. I know this because my last house was the the guy at Home Depot recommended fescue because it was very very shaded. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, it's also the ugliest. Yeah, yeah, it is. If is you it, like fescue, I'm sorry. I kind of want to see a picture of fescue. All right, just Google it. You can look at a, pe- a picture of fescue right here. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Riley, go ahead and cue that up. Oh, I like that. It's it's very coarse grass. It's not very tight. Yeah, I like a coarse grass. So, Anyways, no, no, no. Uh, so <laughs> this is grass. what you need, dude. Goals. You need Bermuda all day. Hold on, Ross. Yep, we're Hold looking on. at Bermuda. Oh man, Bermuda's fire. So what you're gonna want to do to follow along here, guys, is go to Google Images. <laughs> yes, you gotta overseed <laughs> go to it. GoogleImages.com. Overseed it. Um, aerate it. All right, how much? What do we got? How much time do we have? Uh, not a lot. 
All right. So what's, what do you want to talk company goals? Sure. 2023? Sure, sure. 2023. Well, I think about the roastery and I think about uh, I would love to have – it's 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 hard to say it this way because it's a little backwards, but I'd love to have two full time employees and then maybe one part time to deal with the amount of production that we're handling here. Um, and I think I think that and I say it's backwards because you don't hire people to get production. You have production to, and then you hire people to match that. So uh, the issue is I don't know how much production uh, you would need to, I think, I don't know. Like I need to make a spreadsheet. Is that what you're saying? Basically, I'll I get need, on that after this show. I'm going to need you to do some projections. Big yeah, T. Great. Sounds good. But anyways, I, I just would love to, I, I think our personnel situation at the roastery has been, we, we've had some steady people, but it's been a little bit more, uh, it's in contrast to the cafe. You know, the cafes had a lot of full-time folks that have been there for years. The roastery, has been a little bit more transient. And so, cause, cause the work is a little bit, uh, it's not as like specialized skill to package coffee. Mm-hmm. And so I would love to just have some really steady people here that are really bought in. Um, and we, we have that for sure. And I would just love to see it grow more. We're definitely in the early phases of building a team like that. The reality though, is that we just haven't, needed a ton of people to accomplish a successful operation at the roastery because Mm -hmm. it's a very, very efficient business. I don't say that because the product has been bad or that we haven't been doing a lot of work, but it's just that uh, you don't need that many people in contrast to the cafe to pull off the roastery. Yeah. And just to be clear, the product is good Yeah, and we work hard. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Well, there's just been a lot of like owners jumping in to cover stuff. Yeah, and I, I that's I'm obviously happy to do that, but I would also love to um, just have steady people in those positions. Yeah, I think we're in a form of our company. We're trying to like build in a little bit more of like margin, you know. Yeah, and having people. So that's kind of what the cafe is going through right now. Is like we survive with the current schedule we have, but how can we thrive? Yeah. How can we like have a little more cushion, just be a little more, um, uh, better. I want to better. I want to also be, I want to have people in mind for head coach positions in the future too. this year. Yeah. You know, with a third cafe coming potentially a fourth and, you know, God forbid we have turnover in oh. head coach roles, which inevitably happens. Um, I want to be, I want to be hiring people that have trajectory in mind for the company, because we will need that. Yeah, um, and that's 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 a little bit vague of a goal, but I don't know. It's not that vague. Just raising up people for those positions actively. Totally. I already said one of mine. I obviously have more, but for brevity's sake, I, I'm good. What about you? Um, I mean, this is, I think we talked about it a little bit. But it seems like the year of systemization a little bit. It's my I, word for the year. Really? Yeah. Systemize. Um, but yeah, I got hit with it a couple times this year of just like seeing how unorganized my just personal workload translates to affecting the team, you know? So I want to, I don't want to overvalue myself as an owner. Kind of what you're saying. It's like, it's nice to hop in. It's nice to be able to do yeah. this work, but you want to, you want to make yourself replaceable to a certain extent too, so that leaders can rise up and, and take what you do. Mm-hmm. So, that's definitely a, a goal of mine is systemizing my work and delegating it accordingly and like building up and encouraging uh, leaders to step into that with com- confidence, competence, and... What's your third C? Confident. Comfortab- Confident. Comfortability. Wow. That's what I say in training now. I want people to be comfortable, comf- confident, and competent. That's good. I think that's when they thrive. Just write a book. 
Boys, it was a great week oh, yeah. on the Coffee Sometimes podcast. Oh, yes, it was. Hey, if you haven't done so yet, Sprudgy, we need that Sprudgy. We got to take home that Sprudgy. Yeah, we're going to yeah. set it right here. We're short of one I wonder if there's sprudgy. a physical award. Do you think there is? Yes, absolutely. Oh, come on. There's got to be, man. There better be. We'll hang a shelf just for that back there somewhere. We're going to need some shelves. Uh, so, yeah, go to sprudge.com slash vote and give us a vote in that area and any other area you want to write us in. Probably not best new product. I don't think we have anything in that department. But definitely don't Valor's vote for the E80. Kind. Uh, grind by weight. I would, I would, I would go ahead and <laughs> venture to say you shouldn't do that. Yeah, That's that fair. would be hilarious if it won. Would it like jeopard? Like, would it devalue the whole system? No. If that wins, I will write an essay about it. Wow! And, and publish it. Get it peer reviewed. Pe- people yeah. will say things like, oh, "There was a paper written in 2022 by." Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Love you guys. Love you. Happy Love you. New Year. Happy New Year.